we let Sarah pale and pick out her entrance music. Sarah, I'm surprised it's not a country song. I don't know why I feel that way. Good morning. Hey, good morning. You guys talk about a lot of pressure. Yeah, they're supposed to choose a song in, in just a couple of seconds. It's awesome that your producer found it. Yes, and uh, it's Van Halen, so uh, already I think you're getting some cred in northeastern Pennsylvania because there are a lot of uh, fans here of that band. And I think you have a lot of fans here in our area, so welcome to northeastern Pennsylvania. Thank you so much. It's an honor. You have a new book. Uh, it's called Sweet Freedom, a Devotional. And uh, I compared it to One Day at a Time with Sarah Palin because you give people a, a reflection and uh, then a quote, and it reminds me of uh, some other book that I've seen before. So uh, tell us how you decided to go with this format and what you decided to write for 365 days of the year. Well, it, it's certainly a world of tumultuous times right now, and people are really looking for answers, specific answers. It, by a word, the world looking for how do we address these collective problems that we're facing as a nation, but also individually, because we're all facing some kind of battle or fighting in a challenge, and uh, just trying to point people to where the precise answers are. Ironically, or some people would say amazingly, they were spelled out for us in the Old and New Testament, very specific answers to problems we face today, pointing them to that blueprint so that they don't have to worry and so that they don't have to overthink everything and just apply what is written out there in the Old and New Testament and um, know that God's got this and we don't have to worry, but we're certainly commanded to take action and fight for justice and fight for the innocent. So God doesn't drive park cars. He expects us to do something about the problems. This uh, giving control to God when we so desperately want to take, take it ourselves is uh, an ongoing struggle for people, Sarah. And I think that uh, some people just cannot cede their personal control. Uh, yeah, and I'm one to testify to that. I mean, the times in my life, Susan, that I've tried to orchestrate things or push through a door that isn't even open for me, I've really messed it up. And I've, I've learned through my mistakes, and I admit my fallibility and, and my family's imperfection. And I, I use that throughout the book to let people know, hey, learn from me. Learn from my mistakes. Here's what I did. Here's what I shouldn't have done. Here's what uh, probably would have ended better had I allowed God's timing to be exercised. Um, hopefully that, too, does some good and not harm as I express what it's been like to live my life. And certainly, Sarah, the, the struggles of your family, many of us have struggles in our own families that do not make uh, the front page of newspapers and Twitter and the Internet, etc. Well, what is it like to live on that double-edged sword where you have a family and they are not perfect, neither are you, and all of their fallibilities are magnified by the media? Yeah, it's bizarre. You know, as I travel across the country and every single person that I'm privileged to get to speak with, they all share that they're dealing with something in their family or their business or their, their personal life. They all have a challenge, and I joke with them saying, well, just be thankful it's not splashed across the front page of the National Enquirer like our stuff is, whether our stuff true or not is always seems to be reported there. But for me personally, you know, that just prepares us and, and my family, and it, it thickens our skin, and it lets us relate to everybody who is going through their own hardships. But, um, again, I think that a lot of the circumstances that I've been involved in have been allowed to be made manifest in my, in my life as perhaps a lesson for other people. So I try to put it all to good use. How do you keep your hands off the keyboard, though, when there is a lot of bomb throwing and vitriol directed at you. And, and I said in the beginning of the show that I think people have said meaner things about you than they've said about ISIS. So how do you manage to, <laughs> how do you manage to stand down? Oh, man, that's a, that's a good question and a good analogy, too. Uh, I honestly feel that I, I have a shield around me, though. You know, the darts and the arrows come in my way. I just feel like, uh, you know, thank God he drives me to my knees every single day where I'm so reliant on him that I say, um, you know, there's nothing I can do about uh, some of that stuff that, that's out there on the periphery, but I can keep it out on the periphery and not allow it to destroy my core. Uh, that strength that's provided us when we put our life in God's hands. Man, if it weren't for that, yeah, I'd be rolled up in a fetal position under the table and never want to come out to see the light of day if I didn't have that kind of strength. 
And how do you stop uh, doing things that, even if you're mad about stuff that goes on, and I know that you are someone who is is reactionary about things that you see. You've made comments about uh, leadership in our own country. Uh, are there ever times when you really do resist the temptation to go down that road and uh, throw throw a firebomb at somebody? Uh, yeah, I have to. So I... On a practical level, sweat is my sanity. You know, so what I do is I'll, I'll go run. I'll go, I'll go take it out somewhere else. Because if I didn't and if I reacted to all the criticism or all the injustice that I perceive, um, that's all I would be doing all day long, and it, it wouldn't be a productive use of my time. So to get some of that frustration out before I do hit the keyboard and perhaps say something that I really regret, um, I get out there and um, sweat it out and then uh, come back, feel a little bit better, a little bit more rational, I guess, in terms of reaction and uh, can be more productive. Good. Now I'm going to ask you to re- your reaction about what the president said this week at the G20 summit. It's pretty amazing the slap that he just um, laid upon uh, conservatives uh, right across our cheek when the suggestion is that, A, conservatives are intolerant and not compassionate, and we don't care about people who are being persecuted when nothing is further from the truth. We we just know to put America first and keep us safe and sovereign and secure so that we're in a position to help others who are sincerely in need of help. So um, so many things that that our president has said just in the last couple of days, it, it, it really blows you away when you consider this is the leader of the free world who is elected to serve a segment of our globe, and yet he seems to be blaming that segment of our globe, conservatives in in our nation. And certainly the actions of ISIS speak loud and clear to the hearts of many in the world. I mean, so many of us are looking on with absolute horror at what is transpiring, especially in the realm of the attack of civilians. And that kind of attack I find to be just cowardly and and ruthless. Exactly. When this all unfolded in Paris, in layman's terms, how I articulated it, and what I was thinking the whole time was, wait a minute, they did nothing to deserve this. This is how much more unjust can... Um, this demographic is represented by radical Islam. How in the world can any of this ever be rationalized or justified? Well, it, it can't. It's just evil incarnate, and we're supposed to do something about it. We're supposed to fight back and really go on the offensive here. And in terms of that offense, because so much discussion has been had, Sarah, about what the United States is doing so far, and they are doing some uh, bombing strikes, uh, the boots on the ground thing is a big conundrum for people. They're not sure how to feel about it. You have military personnel in your own family. Uh, when you talk to uh, your, your own child about it, what what does that conversation sound like? Oh, another great question. Um, yeah, I, I don't uh, address the issue lightly at all. My son having just recently returned from Iraq again, uh, war is hell. And I, I don't want our young men and women to be sent over there to try to um, fix problems that have been going on for centuries in another country that probably doesn't even want us there. However, if we have the opportunity and we certainly have the ability to stop the bad guys over there and start eradicating a bunch of this evil instead of sitting on our thumbs waiting for it to arrive on our shores and then it's a little bit too late to do much about it, well, I'm very thankful that we have people like my son and his ilk, those who are willing to um, do all that they can using the the talents, the the, um, the passion for this country that God has given them. They're putting it to good use, and they're willing to fight for our security, for our freedom. I'm thankful that they're willing to do that. But you don't go into this lightly, and you have to remember, old men declare wars, and they send the young men to go fight them. So those old men who are calling the shots, and it's proverbial, of course, but they better know what they're doing, and they better have us in it to win it. Uh, one more question. Uh, uh, earlier this week, you indicated you might re-enter public life. How might you re-enter, and what kind of office would you like to hold? Well, my everything's an open door. I mean, I, I know that, and, and I know that uh, 
at some point down the line if uh, there's an opportunity to get back in there and serve. And I know that also, though, you can be very influential without a title and without, you know, some nameplate on an office door somewhere. Uh, but if there's an opportunity where I would be able to efficiently use time to really make a difference in public office, yeah, I'd run for office again. Sarah Palin, the author of a new book called Sweet Freedom, a devotional happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Thank you so much. You too.